It's almost rush hour and prices are going up three cents. How can I do this quickly? Are you making quick price changes? Are they a necessity for a busy store manager? Well, you know what? Passport gives you choices and makes this process quite simple. The best way to show you is on our manager's workstation. So let's go to the screen here on my passport for a second. To do a price change, you would need to go to your manager's workstation and look underneath the pricing button. It's not under fuel, it's under pricing. Look for the fuel price change application, which will quickly bring up the ability to change the fuel prices on all fuel grades that are supported at your store. Now there's several different ways to do this, but what I've seen as being the easiest is typically you change your prices on all your grades the same amount. There's a quick little Microsoft feature where you select the first grade and then hold down your shift key and click with your left mouse button at the same time to highlight all your fuel prices. And then all you need to do is select the increase selected prices by a certain amount. Three cents is what I show on the screen here. You also can select to make this occur immediately or after the end of the next day or only when the cashier chooses to do it at a certain time. Now make sure once you've done this to press your save button. I need to get this new item in the system and I don't know where to start. If you have a back office, all new items should be entered through this application and then passed along the passport via the back office interface. Very simple process can happen immediately. However, if you do not have a back office price book system, you can easily add new items through the passport pricing menu on the manager's workstation. Now let's go to the screen, I'll show you what this looks like. In the passport application, you will go to the manager's workstation, you will go to the pricing menu. Under the pricing menu, you will select item for item pricing. Remember, this is also where you can do your fuel price changes as well. If we were to add a new item, we would actually select the Add button at this time. But what I'm showing you here is I'm going to search for salty snacks. I'm going to add in some new peanuts. Notice we've already got some peanuts in here. At this point, you would actually enter the information about this particular item, what department it relates to, its, its base price per unit, but you also see there are other attributes you can put in about any particular item. You also will enter in the scan code that may relate to that. Now if you had a not on file slip printed, you would use the information on that not on file slip to provide you the information for the scan code. There are several other third party applications you can use with Passport to get these scan codes easily put into your system. Once you've entered a scan code, you go to the options tab and there are several attributes about the product at that point that you would enter at this time, such as tax rate, if there's a restriction around it, if it's related to any particular price group, if you're requiring a quantity to be allowed or required, and most importantly, is the item active for sale. Once you've entered all the necessary information for your particular item, make sure you press the Save button the item will immediately become active for sale and usable at the front desk. Now for more information about this, you can simply go to our online help button and search for item in the index or the search area. It will step you through the process of adding stock items and give you examples. Remember, adding items is a several step process. It may start at the front counter with an item not scanning, if you have a back office, use the back office to add new items. It's a simple process, one you're going to do every day, and Passport's here to help you. We have a new employee, Joe. How do I get him in the Passport system? So you have a new employee, and you want to add him into your Passport system. To quickly set up a new employee, you need to go to the manager's workstation. Let's go to the screen. I'll show you what this looks like. Once you've signed on to the manager's workstation, you need to press the Set Up button located at the bottom of the screen. Then you need to go to the Employee Maintenance application. 
It's simply denoted as employee. You'll see a list of employees on the screen that are currently active in the system. To add Joe, we'll call him Joseph, to our system, we'll need to hit the Add button first. It will then take you to a three-tab setup. I'm going to enter Joseph's name as well as give him an operator ID and enter his birth date. Why are these important? Every employee needs to have his or her own operator ID, something they can remember. Birth date's important because Passport not only restricts buyers of products, but sellers. In certain states, employees have to be at a certain age to be able to sell things such as alcohol or cigarette. You can enter other information about your employee as well, their address, their phone, if necessary. The security tab is the second tab we go to and this is where we define what Joseph's going to be doing in our store. Joseph's a cashier and that's how we're setting him up. Each role described in this security group has certain features that are available for that customer or that cashier, supervisor, manager, or janitor. After we set up the role for Joseph, we go to some of his preferences. As you can see, there's some tabs here around blind balancing, um, if Joseph's able to see his totals when he's balancing his teal, his keypad preference, and his right or left hand preference. Since this is a touchscreen based application and Joseph is right handed, we're going to make sure the keypad is on, located on the right hand side of the screen. Once all of these settings are in place to your satisfaction, make sure to hit the save key. There's really only one more step that has to be required for Joseph to be up and running with Passport, is they have to set their own password. This is done once he signs on the first time, he enters the default password for the system, and then will be prompted to enter his unique password. Every new employee is important. We want to make it easy for you to set them up to make their Passport experience a very positive one. You've done a good job, Joe. I'm going to give you some more responsibility. As employees grow, they may be given more responsibility. Based upon your passport configuration, you may either promote cashiers to more responsible roles or potentially add features to the current cashier job function. I'm really going to show you one right now. This is an employee's job role that can be changed by going to the employee management section and promoting his security group to a higher job function, such as supervisor or manager. Let's go to the screen. I'll show you what this looks like. In the Passport Manager's workstation, we need to go on under the Setup Employee button. You're familiar with this when we actually added your employees. In this section, we're going to look for Joseph, the same employee we added previously. And Joseph will now be promoted from a cashier function to a supervisor function. This is done by bringing up Joseph's particular profile and selecting the security tab. In the security tab, we promote Joseph from a cashier role to a supervisor role. Once this is done, make sure you hit the save button and now Joseph will be given all the functionality and capabilities of a supervisor at your store. Everyone say goodbye to Joe. Now how do I get him off my passport system? If you should lose an employee, you can quickly deactivate their account with just a click of a button. Now let me go to the passport screen and show you how to do this. Under the same employee management application, which is located under Setup Employee, you would then select the employee who has left your store or no longer works with you. You bring up that employee by hitting the Change button and simply go in the General tab to the very bottom and click on Active Operator. This will no longer allow that employee to sign on to your passport system. Now you'll see that the employee remains in your system for a period of time mainly for reporting purposes. I need to set up a local account for my good customer, Bob's Tire and Automotive. 
His employees stop by all the time and I want to make it easy for them to fill up at my station. There are several steps needed for a local account to be set up in Passport. First, you need to configure a local account tender on the Passport system. This is performed by going to the Setup Store menu and selecting the Tender Maintenance application. You'll select the Add button and create a new tender called Local Account with a tender type of Local Account. Once you've entered all the required fields, you can then go to the Local Account Maintenance screens located under the Setup Store menu. In this application, you create a new local account. We're calling ours Bob's Tires in Automotive. Set the limits for the account and then create the sub-accounts that will be reported against this master account. Once you've configured the settings for this account, the system will then allow the cashier to select the local account tender as a valid tender for any store transactions. Please note that the receipts for these transactions will include the current balance for these type of transactions. For future reference on this topic, including the reporting of local accounts, please refer to the online help on the Passport Manager Workstation application. Look for local accounts. So let's go to the Passport Manager's Workstation and set up a local account. You first start in the tender section because we first have to tell Passport that there's a local account tender that we'll be using. You need to go to the setup store tender maintenance application and as you see here I've already created a local accounts tender but you may have to actually hit the add button and create a new account called local accounts. Make sure you note that not only describing the tender as local accounts you need to actually create a tender group called local accounts. It's located in the drop down list for tender group. If you do not do this local accounts will not function properly. You can put the receipt descriptions any ten NAX tender code associated with this and just like any other tender there are other areas as far as denominations and what functions that may be related to local accounts that you can select based upon your store's operations. One of the key areas you need to always remember is under register groups you need to make sure that the register group for your stores uh, have local accounts set up. In this case I've just selected sales. Once you're done hit the save button. Now that's step one. Step two is to actually create the local accounts at your store. Now this is done by going to the local accounts maintenance application located under your setup store menu. Once you've selected the local accounts maintenance application, you actually need to start by hitting the add button, as I'm doing right now, to create a new local account. Now we need to ask some information about this local account, such as the account's name. This, the one I'm setting up is for Bob's Tires in Auto. I could put their VAT number, uh, which is applicable to each customer. Here I'm entering just a default number. The hold limit is important because this is telling me how much credit I'm allowing this customer to have. Now Bob comes in quite often to pay his bill. So I'm only setting up a $500 hold limit. Floor limit is the amount that he can buy in one particular transaction. So for this transaction I'm setting up a floor limit that will apply to any particular transaction Bob's Tire and Auto may do on a particular day. I'm setting this up to $45. There's also a warning limit field that we need to make sure to set up for local accounts. This is to tell me and Bob's Tire and Auto that he's quickly approaching the hold limit for his account. I'm setting this up for $450. We also have selected to print the current balance on the receipts so that Bob's Tire and Auto will always know how much they are owing the store at any point in time. I can put some address information in the address tab and then I also can go and create any sub accounts. And here I'm setting one up for little Bob who works for his father and I'm putting his vehicle registration number in as well. 
Now once I've created the local accounts and, and all appropriate sub accounts, I make sure to exit the application and now that local account is set up and can be reported against. Now please remember when you actually sell something with local accounts and hit the local accounts tender, the passport application will actually show you all of the local accounts that are available on the passport system. You would then select the appropriate local account and then the correct tender would be appropriately applied for that customer. I have way too many reports printing at store close. What can I do? So you're getting too many reports with your passport. Oh, that's easily remedied. Now we're back here in the office. We're going to go into our manager's workstation application, but you need your keyboard and your mouse. And we're going to sign on into the manager's workstation application and look underneath the setup store menu. Under the setup store menu, you're going to look for an application called period maintenance. Now in period maintenance, a manager can select which reports are printed automatically at either your store or your shift close. Now, you know, the manager can also select the order of the reports by using the up and down arrow keys. The, the manager can also decide if they want an auxiliary or a separate copy of a specific report at the end of their regular store or shift close reports. Now, when you've made all these changes, and making sure to include your network reports as well, you need to make sure you hit the save button so that all these options that you've selected will apply. You'll see that happen at your next store close. I need to reprint one of my reports. What do I need to do? If you wish to reprint a report or request a report that was not included in your daily store close, simply go to the manager's workstation application and select the reports menu. Let's go to the screen. I'll show you what this looks like. In the Passport Manager's Workstation application, you hit the Reports menu and then select the particular report area that you want to find a re report to reprint. I'm going to the Sales Reports. And in the Sales Reports, I want to reprint my POU Sales report. You can either select that report by highlighting and hitting the Select button or by double-clicking on the report itself. Once you've selected the report you want to print, the passport will take you to a screen that says, for what period type do you want to reprint this report? I'm actually selecting a business day and want to reprint the report from a particular day that I, it may even be my current day, that I want to see what that data is showing. So once I've selected the day that I want to reprint, Oftentimes, I will just print preview that report. You can always choose to print it out to your report printer. That is no problem. But sometimes you may just want to look at some particular information and print preview really comes in handy. You can also use the search button to look through any of these reports for particular pieces of information that may be pertinent to you. Once you're done, hit the exit button and hopefully this will help you find the information you need to find. Report printing is easy. You can either preview it or print it to your report printer. Well, I want to promote our monthly manager special and I want to use our customer display. But where do I start? If you would wish to change or alter your customer display message to promote a particular item, report winning lottery numbers, or provide information to customers, simply go to the setup register menu on your manager workstation. Let's go to the screen. I'll show you how to do this. On your passport manager's workstation screen, you will go to the setup button and select the register group. Then you will select the register group maintenance application. That is customized for every register group that you have set up at your store. In register group maintenance, you would select the POS group that you have assigned for your, all your registers, and you see a series of tabs that are customized for the registers in your store. At that time, you will look for the customer display tab. Once you bring that tab up, you actually see the message that is 
scrolling on your customer display while the system is idle, meaning you're not ringing up any items. Now, you see a default message I have here blatantly promoting Gilbarco, but I'm going to show you two examples of how you can use your customer display for customer awareness. The first is just something to make your customer aware of maybe some signage in your store that may be promoting a manager special. Your manager specials may vary every month or every week. This may cause your customer to ask or inquire about your manager special, which works just fine. There's also the ability to try to upsell a customer on something they may not have thought about today. The second option is to make the customer aware of something like motor oil, something that while they're standing in line, they may not have thought about purchasing any oil for their car. You put a generic message about having a good day, and then you just simply ask the question, have they thought about buying a particular item? You'll be amazed how many times this may cause a customer to go back or break out a line and pick up an item or an item that's conveniently located at the register and purchase it at that time. Remember, changing your customer display, you go to the register group maintenance screen, go to the customer display tab, select your message carefully, and make sure you hit save. I hope this helps. I want to promote my monthly manager special and I want to use my receipts to make this happen. What do I need to do? If you would wish to change or alter your customer's receipts to promote a particular item, report winning lottery numbers, or provide information to customers, simply go to the setup register menu on the manager workstation. Let's go to the passport. I'll show you how to do this. In the passport manager's workstation, you will go to the setup register button first selecting setup, then selecting register. Under the register menu, you will select the register group maintenance application, and then select the change button for the register group in question. Very similar to the customer display, you will go to the receipt tab instead of the customer display tab. There you will see the header and footer for the receipts that your customer gets for every transaction. This is only relating to inside sales. By default, we actually have the header to be the receipt, the store address, which is for informational purposes. The receipt header can be anything you want it to be, but in this case, we have it set up to be the store address. The footer, by default, we have actually been using the footer of the receipt to report winning lottery numbers, either for the week or for the day. This is a great way to serve your customer. But we want to change this to actually promote a manager special. So first thing you need to do is to delete what is on that footer at that time. So you just highlight it and press your delete key on your keyboard. Now we want to actually promote our manager special. So I'm going to key in manager special for the month. We actually have a ice cream promotion we're selling. We're giving free ice cream if someone were to purchase a particular product. So we're going to say free ice cream with purchase of hot dogs and 20 ounce soda. Okay, that sounds good. So hopefully this will help push some of our ice cream sales and also be a way to uh, pull people inside the store more often. That receipt is very powerful for your customer. It is an awareness. It can also provide them information like lottery numbers. And just interestingly enough, you can also apply the receipt trailer and headers inside the store to your CRIND as well. So remember, the receipt header and footer can be used to provide necessary information for your customer, either winning lottery numbers or promotions that you want to make sure your customer knows about in the store. Interestingly enough, that same message can be applied to your CRIND as well. Something is not adding up. I suspect one of the employees is stealing from their cash drawer. How can I investigate further before I confront them? Theft 
is a serious problem. And a manager needs to have all the facts before they can confront any employee. In Passport, the manager should start with the reports. First, the manager can use the cashier's till report to review the over-under and any key indicators that may help determine if the cashier is doing anything unusual. The manager could also compare all the cashiers in the cashier statistics report to see if any cashiers stand out in any area of concern. Now, if the manager begins to suspect a particular cashier, he can then investigate that employee through the use of the Passport Electronic Journal that allows the manager to review every keystroke and button press the cashier could have performed over a particular period of time. The manager could also review the security video surveillance that integrates passport transactions to pinpoint the exact incident with the information found in the electronic journal. Hopefully, knowledge of these tools by both managers and employees will help alleviate the risk of theft. Let's go to the manager's workstation and we'll look and see some of the tools that can be used in this particular area. First, we're going to start with a till report. Every cashier prints a till report, but there's a way for your manager to go back and reprint a till report or look at it. That would be actually under the reports section, under the manager's workstation. And under the reports section of the manager's workstation, you would then go to the accounting reports and scroll down to the till report area. In the till report, you select the day that you want to find the cashier's till, and then you can either print, preview it, or print it. We're bringing up one at this time. The key area to look at in the till report, other than the over and short for their drawer, is some of the key indicators shown here in the other section. Here you can see some things like safe drops, no sales, transaction voids, and there's actually a monetary amount that goes along with that. If you want to continue your investigation, a manager can actually go to another report in our accounting reports area called the Historical Cashier Statistics Report. Now this actually is a, a report that cross-references all cashiers in some key indicator areas over a particular period of time to see if any cashier stands out. It's a great way to compare and contrast. I'm actually going to select a particular business day and for this example I've only really got one cashier set up for this but in your typical store you'll see all cashiers that are working for that business day appearing in this report. Notice you get the same information that you get in the till report but you're able to compare those cashiers across all of those categories and something will jump out at you. Moving on from there, if you want to look at a particular cashier in more detail, you actually go to the journal reports. And in the journal reports menu, you want to select the electronic journal. The electronic journal actually provides you with a detailed keystroke by keystroke analysis of each cashier. Now I want to look at a particular date and I also want to evaluate a particular cashier. I could look at all cashiers or a particular cashier for a particular period of time or for the whole day. When I have actually brought up this information, I can look and see what that cashier has done throughout the day. I can use the search mechanism to look for particular key item information such as restriction or restricted items. I can look for no sales, void transactions. And if I see something in here that looks suspicious, I can then cross-reference the electronic journal information to the security camera. The security camera can also be configured to run off of Passport. I'm showing you quickly that there's a way to set up the security camera to work off the passport itself instead of gathering your data.